What do you think is the number one mistake that people make when it comes to protein? Not eating enough. What mistake? To, what mistake? I think the I think the two mistakes is not eating enough, but definitely not getting enough in bre- the first meal. I think the first meal is a critical change for adults to make. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about best quality proteins. You mentioned leucine and you did some pivotal work when it came to leucine and the importance of that. So it's a branch chain amino acid. It's very important for muscle protein synthesis. I have a list here of foods that are high in leucine and then so that people can understand exactly what they should eat and maybe how much. So I'll go through them and you tell me if they're excellent, how much leucine, and I have some other ones here that maybe you won't like. So what do you think about beef, including steak, ground beef, and ribeye? So so beef, actually, all muscle foods, whether it's chicken or pork or beef uh, or, or fish, uh, the, the leucine content is around 9%. Okay. So in terms of when you say 9%, how much leucine do we need per day? Yeah. So um, this is a math quiz. Um, so, so you need about... So we, we think the minimum number at a meal needs to be at least 2.5. We think that you optimize it around three grams at a meal, which is interesting. The R- I, we mentioned the RDAs earlier. The RDA for leucine right now is 2.9 grams per day. We think the optimum intake is three grams per meal, three times the RDA. So that would mean around six to even maybe nine grams of, pro- of of leucine a day. So I've put here, you mentioned the beef is great. Any muscle meats like chicken, lamb, um, e- even fish. So I've put here the amount of uh, leucine. It's about like 2.6 grams per 100 grams or three and a half ounces. So does does that seem fair? Let's see if I th- do that. So so, so an ounce, of, an ounce would have about seven grams of protein in it, right? I mean, typically, typically with meats, you need about, you need around four and a half to five ounces of meats to get the leucine level. Okay. So that is a good, good benchmark. So if people eat about four and a half to five ounces, which is in grams, about 146 grams, um, you're going to get enough leucine and also enough protein as well. So that's in the, that's in the right range. And, you know, Double that, you know, so that's that's kind of your that's kind of your protein target. Um, and that'll get you thirty grams of protein, thirty to thirty five. And we said earlier, you can go up to about sixty. So some place between four and eight ounces of meats uh, probably is the range that's functional, okay? Interesting caveat, fish has lower protein per ounce. So, quote, gravity-bearing species have denser muscles at around seven to eight grams of protein per ounce, where fish is about five to six. So you need at least another ounce and a half of fish. So at four and a half, you now need six ounces of fish to be equal. It's one of the reasons, it's one of the reasons people will eat a you know, a six ounce uh, filet of fish and a six ounce filet of meat. And they say, well, I felt so much lighter. Well, they had 20% less protein in it. So when it comes to ruminant meat, so beef, lamb, uh, uh, venison, if it's pork and chicken, probably about um, five ounces to maybe about eight ounces per meal. Do that times two. That's going to get enough leucine and protein. And then for fish, it's more, about an ounce more. So it could be seven to 10. If you're just eating fish the whole day, which I don't think people are going to eat fish the whole day, they're probably going to eat meat. In Chicago, we're about 1,500 miles from an ocean. So we're not definitely not eating fish every day. Absolutely. What about things like beef liver? Is that good to consume? So, so now we're getting into all the other nutrients and bioavailability. So, you know, liver has a, an enormous amount of vitamins and minerals and fatty acids in it, where muscle in general is, is quite a bit lower. So, you know, as far as a protein source, it's not any better. But as far as a nutrient source, it's very rich. Uh, and that's the same as if you think about the color of meats, the more red the meats, the more nutrient dense it is. 
the whiter the meats, the more aerobic it is. I mean, the more anaerobic it is. So chicken breast and a birds that can't fly, it's totally, it's totally anaerobic. It has very few mitochondria. It has very few enzymes. Okay. Pork is sort of that way too. So red meats actually have the highest nutrient density of uh, zinc, magnesium, selenium, B6, B12, et cetera, et cetera. And then liver, as you're suggesting, is even higher yet. So do you think that a ribeye is better than a chicken breast to eat? Absolutely. Oh, you're, you're not just asking about taste, right? <laughs> that, I mean, taste, but nutrient value, because that is so important. That's why people feel so much better eating a fatty ribeye versus a chicken breast. This, it's just like, I need to eat more and I don't feel satisfied because of all the, the protein. The fats actually make you more satisfied too, but it's, it's far, it's, it has a much better nutrient density profile. Interesting. Oh, I love that. Okay. You mentioned whey protein earlier. So do you like whey protein to get your protein and your leucine? Yeah. So I use a whey protein shake every day. So, you know, that I think whey is, depending on the quality of the whey you get, um, is, a, is around 11 to 12% leucine. So you can reach your leucine threshold with 23 grams of whey protein. So if you're really after post-workout getting a muscle effect, the best way to do it is a whey protein shake. If you want to have the lowest amount of calories at your breakfast and with the biggest effect for your muscles, a whey protein shake is the way to go. And that's what we use in all of our studies, and that's the shakes that we make. Do you think um, you need to eat whole nutrient-dense foods first before you consider adding in the whey protein? nutrient dense. So you're talking vitamins and minerals? So a ribeye versus whey protein, I'd be guessing that you want to eat a ribeye over a whey protein based on all the nutrient profile because whey protein, it tends to be pr processed, if that makes sense. It's something that's convenient. So just giving people an understanding of what's better. I wouldn't use the word process necessarily, even though it is isolated. I mean, I think the point you're making is that a whey protein isolate is 97% pure, and so it has basically no other nutrients in it, where the ribeye has all of a nutrient profile. If you think about what is ribeye, well, a ribeye is the same as the muscles in your body. So everything that you need in your body is in that ribeye in a very bioavailable form. The B6 is exactly right because it's exactly what's in your body. The zinc is exactly the same. The iron, ex it's exactly the same where the whey protein has nothing there. You know, it's just protein. And so, in fact, the protein shake we make is not a pure protein. It's a meal replacement. So we actually supplement it with a, a complete vitamin mineral mix, uh, f uh, fibers, medium chain triglycerides, specific carbohydrates. So we do it as a meal replacement for that same reason. So protein shakes have their role, but kind of what, like what you're suggesting, under themselves, they're not complete nutrition. Mm -hmm. And what's the name of the protein shake that you formulate? So, so mine is under a concept of, of, of metabolic, uh, exactly as the word, uh, my my website is uh, uh, metabolictransformation.com. And so people can buy them through that. I'm going to leave the link for everything in the description. I just thought that I'd put that there in case people are like, well, what is Dr. Lehman's protein? Uh, well, it's not a protein shake. It's a meal replacement. So it's got all the nutrients. Yeah. So I, I've, worked with, I've worked with the very best whey protein companies in the world. So, you know, Bipro, AgriPure, uh, you know, I've worked with development of those proteins. So I'm, I'm definitely a whey protein expert and an expert in many of the subproteins like alpha-lactalbumin and, and lactoferrin and things of that nature. So I know a lot about whey proteins. Okay. What about dairy protein? So yogurt, uh, it could be sour cream. It could be anything coming from a dairy. Is that as good? So I actually generated Greek yogurts in the United States. I was at a meeting in 2003 in San Antonio, Texas, and I had all of the R&D people in the dairy industry sitting in a 
250 people in front of me. And I said, you know, our research shows that whey protein is the absolute best protein out there. And you guys are selling crappy yogurts that have nothing but sugar in it. I said, you need to start selling Greek yogurts. Uh, and Chobani came on the market within a year. And basically, the dairy industry totally revamped itself and went to yogurts that have protein. So all of the proteins and protein shakes you see on the market now, you know, talking 15 grams, 30 grams, that's all because of what we published. So, yeah, <laughs> we know about those. Uh, one of the things that's interesting, the, um, w the Greek yogurts are a bit more of a cheese type of thing. Uh, and so they're more casein than whey. Uh, and so, you know, I like the yogurts. And so I actually take our protein powder and I mix it with Greek yogurt uh, and I make a blend of that. So uh, whey protein is very rapidly digested. Uh, casein is more slowly digested. So it gives me a little bit more of a balance of the two. Okay. I also want to ask for people that are budget conscious because they might think, well, I can't afford an expensive ribeye. I can't afford maybe a, a whey protein supplement. How can you do this while being on a budget? What are your protein favorites if somebody is on a tight budget? Well, generally eggs are pretty good, except in the U.S. right now where the price is three times normal. <laughs> um, you know, I think that we actually did we actually did some low-income weight loss studies looking at protein choices when I was at the University of Illinois. Um, and what we found was that if people actually shift to a protein-focused diet, reducing their carbs, it's actually cheaper than the junky diet they're eating. They were eating a lot of junk foods and things that quick serve places, they're actually more expensive. Um, you know, a lot of the chips and candies and things of that nature are actually quite expensive. So what we found was they actually was cheaper diet. Um, in terms of the way you ask the question, um, I, you know, I think there are, there are meat cuts that are as healthy, but lower price than a high-end ribeye. Uh, frankly, hamburger. Uh, is a perfectly legitimate protein source. Um, so, you know, eggs and hamburger and, and hams and, and chickens. And I mean, you know, pick and choose. <clears throat> I think they're all, they're all functional. You know, I use a blend of all of them. I use, you know, I use cheeses. I use dairies. Uh, I'm a big fan of milk. You know, milk is one gram per per ounce. I like milk. So if I need nine more grams at my meal, I just have nine ounces of milk. If I need four more, I have four. I mean, you can titrate in the milk to fill in whatever gap you're missing.